Are you afraid that the no contact rule is not working for you? Well, what if I were to tell you that a lot of what you assume about the no contact rule is based on false data? And today, I'd like to have a really honest discussion on what it looks like when the no contact rule is actually working versus what it looks like when it's not working. So let's start first by talking about the biggest myth revolving around the no contact rule. So a lot of my peers assume that the no contact rule is only working if your ex is frantically texting you or calling you. But that's just simply not true. Now their premise for the argument is that the no contact rule has its psychological basis hooked into a concept called reactant. Now reactant is a psychological concept that basically states that human beings have behavioral freedoms. And when those behavioral freedoms become threatened, we react in a way to try to reobtain that behavioral freedom. I've talked a lot about this on the past in the YouTube channel, and the no contact rule seems like a prime candidate for reactants. And one of the reasons that the no contact rule does work is because it does employ a little bit of reactants. You're taking away your ex's option and behavioral freedom of talking to you. But here's where things get a little difficult to explain. A couple years ago, I decided to run a poll in our private Facebook support group. Now, if you're not familiar, we have this group on Facebook that is just a collection of all of our clients, basically anyone who purchased a program from me or anyone who purchased a coaching session from me or one of my coaches. We have them all condensed into one place so that we can talk to them and also learn and improve our methods. So I asked them, a simple question. For those of you who have completed the no contact rule, how many of your exes reached out to you during it? Now my assumption here was that most of the people were going to respond that their exes had reached out to them, but the exact opposite had actually occurred. According to this poll, 62% of people said that their exes did not reach out to them at all during the no contact rule. And this kind of flies in the face of what most experts out there are talking about or recommending with regards to the no contact rule. They say, hey, do the no contact rule. It'll make your ex miss you. They'll be a lot more likely to reach out to you. They'll frantically text you. They'll frantically call you. But that's not true. And to contradict this research even further, when we actually interview our success stories, people who've gone through our program successfully, coached with us successfully, and gotten their exes back, and we asked them, hey, how important was the no contact rule to you? 90% of them swore by it. So on the one hand, we're saying 62% of exes are not gonna reach out to you during the no contact rule, you would chalk that up as a failure. But on the other hand, 90% of people who are getting their exes back are swearing by the no contact rule. So what the heck is going on here? Well, I think the answer lies in researching our success stories, diving deeper into what worked for them and what didn't work for them, specifically as it relates to the no contact rule. So a bit of a history lesson. So I started Ex-Boyfriend Recovery in 2012 and the brother slash sister website to it, Ex-Girlfriend Recovery in 2013. So roughly 10 years I've been at this studying breakups and understanding their nuances. And from the beginning, I've always sworn by the no contact rule, but like all of my other peers, I swore by it for I think the wrong reason. I would say it works because of reactance, of information gap theory, of the playing hard to get component. And to prove this point, I actually went to the Wayback Machine. Now, if you're not familiar, the Wayback Machine is sort of like this web archive that you can go back in time and look at what your website looked like way back when you started it. Because I was curious, hey, what were my exact words I would use when I would describe the no contact rule? And as you can see here, they're not pretty. So I said in 2014, I think this is, that the no contact rule is a psychological tactic for getting your ex back if you want. Think of it this way, by ignoring your ex, they're gonna to begin to wonder why you aren't begging for them back. So essentially, I only viewed the no contact rule as a means to an end. And that means was, hey, do the no contact rule and it will significantly raise the chances that your ex will miss you. And while that may still hold true, the natural assumption is that when someone misses you, they're gonna reach out to you constantly. And this creates a certain level of expectations for people who do the no contact rule. And yet, that's not what happens in reality. Most exes don't reach out to you at all during the no contact rule. So how can it still be working? Well, I think now that we've kind of had the cringe-worthy definition of the no contact rule outputted here, let's look at what my current definition of the no contact rule actually looks like. So now I refer to the no contact rule as a period of time where you cut off all conceivable communication with an ex after a breakup. That part hasn't changed. 
The intent of this tactic should not be used to make your ex miss you, but instead should be used to rebuild your own life so that you outgrow your ex. By doing this, the no contact rule can have the added benefit of making an ex miss you. So do you see the difference here? Instead of focusing on the benefits it will have with regards to your ex and having them reach out to you and blah, 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 we're focusing more on you, on outgrowing your ex. And that's really the big thing I learned from studying success stories. You see, the people who swore by the no contact rule, who got their exes back, always cited the fact that, yeah, they still wanted their exes back, but they had gotten to this place emotionally where they were okay if they didn't get their exes back. And they got to that place through what they did with their time apart during the no contact rule. So essentially, during the no contact rule, what are you spending your time on? If it's spent on focusing on your ex, you're doing it wrong. You're gonna fail. If it's spent on focusing on you, you're doing it right. But there's actually another layer of complication that gets added to this equation, which is the fact that the no contact rule is not the be all end all strategy many people think it is. So many people come into the no contact rule and think they can fail it and it will still be effective each time they have to restart it. So as a general rule, when you use a no contact rule on your ex, if you fail it, meaning you break it prematurely to contact your ex or to respond to them, you have to start it over from the beginning. And a lot of people take advantage of this. They get obsessed with the no contact rule. They do it for a week, they break it, they start over from the beginning. They do it for a week, they break it, they start over from the beginning, and around and around it goes. But what a lot of people don't realize is that each time that happens, the no contact rule loses its ultimate effectiveness. All of those cool things that still hold true, reactance, information gap theory, uh, playing hard to get, those start to lose their effectiveness. And people seem to gloss over this fact. They seem to use the no contact rule the same way you would a video game, where if you die in the video game, you get to start over from the beginning with no consequences. That's not the case. Real life is different. The no contact rule is not going to be as effective on the fifth attempt as it will be on the first attempt. Now it's common sense, but you'd be surprised at how people actually in this situation fail to get this. And then there's the noteworthy aspect of the no contact rule, right? So people who are focused on outgrowing their ex tend to do noteworthy things outside of their ex, which has this really cool effect of making their ex interested in them again. So there are 24 hours in a day, but assuming you sleep eight hours at night, that leaves you with roughly 16 hours for how you're gonna spend your time during your waking moments. What I've tended to notice is the people who do really well in the post breakup time period are the people who don't use all of their time focused on their ex. Unfortunately, most of the people that come to my YouTube channel, watch these videos, tend to be hyper focused on their exes, meaning they're spending most of that 16 hours thinking of their ex. Even when they're doing health-based things or wealth-based things outside of relationship-based things, they're thinking of their ex. They're at work, they're thinking of their ex. They're working out, they're thinking of their ex. And it kind of pollutes the quality of time you're spending on those endeavors. So the people who are really using the no contact rule to its full effect are the individuals who are focusing their time away from their ex. They're focusing it on themselves. Now lately, I've been going through YouTube and trying to answer comments when I have a chance, which isn't often, but just so happens yesterday was one of those days that I did that. And I came across this comment from a commenter that sort of broke my heart a little bit. So the person was talking about how they're kind of sad about the breakup and they kind of go through this long winded explanation and then they said, all I can do is focus on myself, FML. And I thought that is this person's problem. The person is so hung up on their ex. They're so focused on their ex, getting their ex back. What is their ex up to? What, who is their ex dating? Blah, blah, blah. They're neglecting themselves. But when they have no choice but to focus on themselves, improve their life, work on themselves, they view it as a negative. But why? Relationships with your ex are not gonna last forever. No relationship with anyone ever lasts forever. You're either going to die first or break up first. Someone's either gonna die or you're going to break up. That's pretty much the only outcome that can occur. So in effect, the only relationship that you have that is a true lifelong relationship is the relationship with yourself. And if you are so negative about using time for yourself, you're destined to fail no matter what. So the point I'm trying to make is that the no contact rule, it can only go as far as you can take it. 
how you're spending your time during no contact is way more important than obsessing about what your ex is up to. Are they going to reach out to me? Are they gonna do this? Are they gonna do that? Who cares? What matters is you. What are you spending your time on? And if you don't have a good answer to that question that leaves you fulfilled, that leaves you happy, that's what you need to be focusing on. Forget all the technical stuff. The technical stuff very rarely makes a difference. The important stuff is what you're doing with your time. So figure that out. And if you do figure that out, then you'll find the no contact rule starts to become easier and ironically, more effective. You create this scenario where you're doing noteworthy things outside of your ex. You're not only gaining attention from your ex, but from other people as well. And it creates a social proof component that makes your ex feel like they're missing out on something important, makes you more attractive. And I know 90% of the people watching this video will not get to this point of the video and they won't put this thing into practice. And I don't understand why. And I think that's because as a society, we've fallen victim to magic bullet solutions. We expect everything to be done for us easily. We don't expect to have to do the work ourselves. But in this case, you're gonna have to.